Hi, I am Narendra Modigari. Welcome to the another lecture on Java programming language. In this lecture, we are going to see how to connect MySQL database using Java programming language. It's also called as JDBC connectivity. So before you start developing any application that interacts with the database, you have to follow all these steps. First, install Java in your computer. Then install any one of the databases like uh, MySQL, Oracle, or Sybase, or DB2. Then install JDBC drivers. Then create a database and then create programs to interact with the database. We assume that you already installed Java and uh, uh, MySQL database in your computer. If you don't know how to install Java and MySQL database, follow the links in the description. I have given the links in the description on how to install Java as well as MySQL database. There are a number of databases available. Uh, for example, MySQL DB is uh, one of the free and open source database. Uh, after installing MySQL DB and configuring MySQL DB, you have to install uh, MySQL connector J also. You can download it from the MySQL website. After uh, downloading this MySQL connector J, extract in, in one folder, then set your class path to the jar file just you downloaded. PostGRE SQL DB is another uh, free and open source database. It also comes up with the GIB's administrator tool called PG Admin 3. And you need not to install JDBC drivers because it also comes up with the JDBC drivers. Oracle is also one of the uh, database. It is not a free and open source. It is a commercial database. You have to get it from the Oracle. This Oracle DB also comes up with the uh, pre-installed JDBC drivers. So you need not install again. Uh, this is the third step. You need to install JDBC drivers. So JDBC ODBC bridge driver is the heart of your uh, JDBC connection. It takes care of most of the connectivity to your database. Uh, most of the database vendors is already providing JDBC drivers. If they are not providing, you have to install them. To download JDBC drivers, just go to the Google, type JDBC ODBC drivers. A link will be there. And this is the place where you can download JDBC ODBC drivers. I have given the link in the description from where you can download uh, JDBC ODBC drivers if your database owner is not providing. Uh, so far we are done with the setup. We install Java, we install database and we install JDBC ODBC drivers also. And we even set the path. The next step is to create a database. To create a database, just go to MySQL Workbench. Like this, uh, give root password. Root is the default password, and you can create a database. The syntax is very simple for creating a database. Create database and name of the database. That's it. So this is the way how you can create databases. Just create this database, execute the query, so you can see a database is created. This is the fourth step. This is the fifth step. So, so far what, what we have done, we install Java, we install, we install MySQL database and we install JDBC and ODBC drivers, then we create a database. Now you can start writing Java programs. Any Java program that interacts with the database will have six steps. And the first step is import the necessary package that you need to interact with the database. Register the drivers, the drivers will differ in for each database and then create a connection with the database, execute your queries, the queries will return results and process those results and clean up the environment, close all the connections. Let's see step by step. So this is the first step, uh, import the packages. This java.sql uh, package will provide almost all the classes that you need to interact with the database. So import these packages. The second step is you have to register your JDBC drivers by using a method called for name method of class and you have to pass the name of your uh, driver the name of the driver will differ based on your database so this is the driver name for mysql and this is the driver name for oracle this for name method will throw exception a class not found exception and you have to handle this exception by keeping the statement inside the try block or by throwing through main method the third step is uh, create a connection with the database by using get connection method of a driver manager class. So this is the method. Create a connection by using get connection method of 
driver minus class which returns an object of connection type you have to pass three parameters the first parameter is url of your database the second parameter is username and third parameter is password so these are the uh, jdbc driver names for different data types different databases and this is the url formats for different databases so for mysql it is jdbc colon mysql colon host name if you are checking your application with a local computer you can give local host otherwise you can you have to give the url of your database and this is the database name with which you are going to interact with so you can choose appropriate url format based on what kind of database you are using and this um, get connection method will throw uh, sql exception and sql timeout exception you have to handle these exceptions uh, by keeping them inside the try block or by throwing through main method so once you create a connection and uh, you can execute your queries with the help of an object of statement class this create statement method will return an object of uh, statement class you can use the object of statement class to execute the queries to execute the queries we have three different methods you have to select one among them depends on what type of query you are executing if you would like to execute ddl statements like uh, create a drop you can go with the execute method it returns either true or false uh, if you want to uh, execute queries like insertion updation deletion you choose execute update method and this method will return an integer representing how many number of rows affected if you want to retrieve data from the database uh, if you want to execute uh, queries like uh, select query go with the execute query method this execute query method will return data in terms of table as an object of result set so result set is an interface this execute query method returns an object of result set type which contains a result as table table type of data if you call execute query method the execute query method will return result as a table data consist of rows and columns and it returns a cursor initially the cursor points to the, uh, the before the first row if you want to move across the rows you can make use of a method called as next method uh, the next method will move from current row to the next row if you want to process through all the rows you can make use of this kind of loops these loops will terminate when there are no more rows to process apart from the next method the result set interface also provides uh, 10 methods the first six method is for uh, your cursor movement to go forward to come backward the next method will make your cursor move to the next row the previous method will make your cursor move to the previous row and if you call first method your cursor will go to the first row if you call last method your cursor will go to the last row if you want to move the exact row number uh, you can use absolute method if you want to jump some n number of rows from current position you can use relative method so these are the six methods for cursor movement this is for it is for moving forward moving backward this is move this is to move to the beginning this is to move to the end this is go to the exact row number and this is to jump to the specified row from the current position and if you want to uh, get data from the database uh, if you want to get data from the tables you can make use of any of these four methods uh, this method is for getting integers this method is getting for strings for these four methods either you can pass column number as a parameter or column name as a parameter you can retrieve data from the table either by passing column number or the column name itself once your communication is done with your database you can close all the environments you can clean up the environment if you don't close all the connections uh, JVM's garbage collector will take care of closing all the connections. Mm, relying on the garbage collection, especially in the database programming, is a very poor programming practice. To ensure that a connection is closed, you could provide a final block in your code. So whatever the code that required to clean up the environment, keep that code inside the finally block. The finally block will execute irrespective of whether the exception is right or not. Explicitly closing a connection conserves a DBMS resource, which will make your database administrator happily to summarize this the whole uh, session uh, any java program that interacts with the database will have all these six steps uh, the first one is uh, import the necessary classes then register your drivers then create a connection 
then execute the queries with the help of uh, an object of statement class, then process those results, then I close all the connections. This is the introduction video on how to um, interact with the database through Java programs. In the next lecture, I will give you a demonstration on how to write programs and how to interact with the database. Okay, we will discuss uh, how to create tables through Java programs, we will create how to insert the data, how to retrieve the data, how to delete the data. Thank you.